Hello, welcome you to the lesson of designing lesson videos using Gagne 9 events of instruction. So you can uh, pause the video at this moment and look into the minimum hardware and software requirements that are especially needed for uh, designing a video lesson. By the way, I'm Anita. Let us move on. This is for you to ponder upon. The art of teaching is the art of assistant discovery. So let us discover Gagnus today. So coming to the lesson outcomes, after this lesson, the learners would be able to explain the Gagnus 9 events of instruction in the context of video lessons. And you will be able to apply Gagnus principles to the design process of video lessons and you will be able to provide appropriate intermediate assessment and resources. Right. So what do you find now? An untidy arrangement of a bookshelf. And now somewhat a neat arrangement of bookshelf. This is the task that we are trying to do. So when delivering a video lecture, it is essentially that we neatly organize the elements of a lecture in a correct pack, right? So Gagnes help you to do this. And apart from this, it's our creativity to enhance the video lessons. So we have into the Gagnes now. These are the nine Gagnes events of instruction that can be followed in designing a video lecture. Gain attention. Inform learners of objectives, stimulate recall of prior learning, that is you have to make a summary of what that has been taught in the previous class or other related item and then coming the present actual content that it uh, comprise your lecture with multimodal delivery and provide learning guidance. So you put additional resources, you put additional evaluation mechanisms, you put additional case studies so that the learners are guided towards the task. Then sixth is elicit performance, that is practice. So practice your, uh, the thing that has been taught. So you have to put practice questions in between the lectures so that the uh, learners would be practicing what they have been taught. Then comes your seventh step. It is providing feedback on the practice to questions. So immediately what the learner is expected to uh, uh, correct after answering the practice questions should be included in the feedback. Then eighth task is assess performance. So this is going to be a consolidated performance that it can be a graded assessment. And ninth is the task that you give the enhance to enhance retention and transfer to the job. So let us look into how we shall use this Gagnes 9 event of instruction. So this is a visual representation of what we have seen now. So this is the first step, gaining the attention of the learner and informing learners of the objectives. So what we are going to learn. Then we are going to talk about and we have the prior learning, the summary session. Then after that, we shall lecture, then provide suitable guidance, then give, give some practice questions for the learners and this shall be made uh, uh, in an iterative manner and after that provide feedback for every practice question that we shall make and finally uh, give some graded assessments so that uh, uh, we shall learn about their learning then at last we reach the ninth step that the task that we need to give to enhance the retention and transfer to their own task. Okay, so coming to the first task of gaining attention, we shall see what shall we do inside a video lesson to gain the attention. You can display the unit name and introduction with good visuals. You can display of related visuals or messages or you can put start your video with an animation. It need not be an animation related to your subject content but it shall be an uh, animation that uh, grabs the attention of the user. Then second step, informing learners. What shall we do now in this step? 
we shall display the session outcomes as I have displayed at the start of this video lesson and we should be informing the need of the topic. So I have explained you with some uh, unorganized shelves and organized shelves. So these things can be made as the second step, right? Then third, we are at the third step, it is prior learning. So these are some of the tasks that can be given us uh, in the third step for understanding their prior learning. You can give a quick summary of the last video chunk or the last lesson um, in 10 or 20 seconds or a small quiz about the last lesson can be launched for the user to think about uh, 10 or 20 seconds. So by recalling the prior learning, we are moving to the next presenting content. So we are here now and let us look into what shall be the so you can have your lecture for three to five minutes and followed by few interaction points. Also try to embed your lecture with good visuals, infographics, text, charts, external file references because your user uh, when looking into a video wish to see all your materials in different modes. So including all these will help your video to be effective. Then include polls, summary and responses as interaction point. That can be quizzes or that can be a short summary as well. And uh, uh, there should be no background music. It should uh, distract the user. And please put at least two interaction points per video in a video of 10 to 15 minutes. If your video is very short, then one is enough. Uh, your video is going to be uh, more than 10 minutes. Please include two interaction points. Right? So now we are at our first interaction point. We have seen uh, four events in Gagnes. So I have given an arrangement of one, two, three and four. Please make your arrangement here. Which one is correct? Please pause your video and find the answer. Right. Hope many of you would have uh, got the content. So the correct answer is the first is gaining attention, then informing about objectives, then recall, then present content. So the answer is 4, 3, 2 and 1. Yes, you are right. If you were wrong, please understand that this is going to be the flow. Okay, let us resume at the fifth place. So it is providing guidance. Okay, so what shall be done in this providing guidance? You can give URLs of related case studies, examples and case studies and you can put suitable directions on performing demonstrations or procedures. You can even put a direction sample problem to how to work out the mathematics problem. But please don't forget to provide the information about all the additional resources and discussion inside the video. Right? So your course must contain a tab of additional resources and you can put all your resources there. Then comes your sixth event, practice. So you must give practice question for the content that has been introduced in the fourth phase. So you can have all these things as a practice. Interactive quizzes, open end responses in between lectures uh, or quiz at the end of each lesson. You can, you know, if you are not incorporating these uh, or responses inside the video lectures, you can have an, even have a separate quiz at the end of each lesson. And you can include open end response question at the end of each lesson. It can be given uh, in discussion as well. Okay, now we are in the seventh step providing feedback. The practice and feedback should be uh, uh, a task that should go together. So, constructive immediate feedback must be given for all the practice questions. So even the uh, learner is correct, you have to appreciate them. Even the learner is wrong, you have to guide them towards the correct answers. So give appropriate additional resources as well based on the assessment. So for this material, you can refer these to know a better understanding. So these type of uh, additional resources shall be given in this feedback. The eighth step is assessing your performance. So this could be a final graded activity. And this can be a module level assessment. That is, you have provided multiple video lectures 
and based on the multiple video lectures you can give a module level assessment or a weekly assessment. The weekly assessment can be done with quizzes where automatic grading is possible or with programming assess assignments and we shall also try automatic grading software as well and we shall give specific assignments like a video seminar or review reports but we need, we need to give the evaluation rubrics with them. So this is how you can try for assessing the performance. Hey, we are at the last step, enhancing retention and transfer to the job. So, so what shall be done? This shall be given as a course level assessment with capstone projects and peer review. You can give specific assess assignments and also you can give some online competitions to be completed and the reports to be submitted here. But anyway, do not forget to frame rubric for all these specific assignments. Right, so we are at the end of all these nine events of instruction. Hope these strategies help, will definitely help you to uh, design an effective video lecture. Okay, this is our second interaction point. Just pass this video and uh, try your answer. Okay, so I hope that you have passed and uh, uh, had a thought about this. And please start practicing and only when we practice we shall find whether it is really tough or it's going to be a simpler job right so please try with your experience also please understand we have to give freedom for the content expression student expression and student interest as well so for content you can have different types of content here and for uh, uh, methods for giving the student to express, you have different types of methods as well. And for creating student interest, we can include so many elements including team process, game playing and even choice in assignments can be given. So these are some design principles we have to keep in mind uh, when moving for designing video lecture. We shall use Lubloom's taxonomy for designing the content and Gagnon's for designing instruction units. And uh, certain content uh, may be very large that it cannot be embedded in a video size of uh, 15 minutes, right? So long content can be broken up into meaningful smaller units so that the size of the video does not exceed 15 minutes and suitable interactions have to be inside and try incorporating multimodal design and please provide additional resources. And after designing, get Creative Commons licensing for your videos, make the video length and you are creative. So please refer additional resources of this course page for this week to know more about Gagni. So are you ready to build a create shelf? That's fine. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can reach me via discussion forum or weekend webinars. Bye-bye.